We have a tribute now to Ian Cameron, the undisputed King of Perth Radio, who spent decades on the air. The broadcast icon retired three months ago, but he was still brimming with ideas. In his final television interview recorded just a few weeks ago, Ian Cameron seemed uncomfortable with retirement and still ready to contribute to the city he loved. Seniors card in hand. The important thing now would be to see whether this works. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement was a whole new experience for Ian Cameron, one he was still trying to embrace. I didn't imagine that I'd be retiring for at least another five or ten years yet. After almost five decades in the spotlight, this new phase of life had come way too soon. It's not easy. I think a lot of people can't wait till they retire, but when you love going to work every day, that's a bit different, you know. You sort of think, oh next week what am I going to do and week after but I seem to be able to fill in, filling the days okay. okay. I'm not surprised. His passion, quirks and wicked sense of humour had endeared him to audiences for decades and his dominance in the radio breakfast slot prevailed right to the end. God bless you and thanks for putting up with me for all of these years. Crippling back pain had cruelly hastened his retirement. Three months after calling it quits, it was clearly slowing his body, but certainly not his mind. When it's in your blood, and I'd been doing it since 1969, apart from my misspent six years in politics, um, <laughs> I, I do miss it terribly. And, you know, the old, I keep thinking things in the middle of the night, oh, it'll be great for the show. Yeah. And then, then I think, oh, hang on, there is no show. No show. Yeah. But I'm working on book number four, so hopefully if I keep the old creative juices flowing. His ideas for Perth too, the city he's called home since the late 1960s, were also flowing. This is the most underutilised piece of real estate probably in the world. But what could be nicer, living yeah. in one of the greatest cities on earth, winter time, look at it. I met Ian in South Perth earlier this month to talk about his vision for Perth. I had no idea, of course, this would be the last time I'd speak to him. Everyone panic and flee. <laughs> this was his first visit to Elizabeth Quay. Fittingly, we arrived on a ferry. This is a beautiful way to see it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It was a trip he'd hoped to repeat many times. I was expecting to see a cesspit the way some people have been carrying on about Elizabeth Key, looks all right to me. If Ian had his way, the Swan River would be a hive of activity. Not just a place for recreation, a hustling, bustling waterway full of commuters and tourists. Surely a city of the size of Perth has reached critical mass, mm. I would have thought. And, you know, some of the other cities I've talked about already are smaller than Perth. Mm. They can do it, mm. so why can't we? And as always, he delivered his view with his usual wit. We seem to be welded onto our cars, but the attraction of sitting there bumper to bumper for an hour and an hour and a half mm, doesn't turn me on all that much. Mm. There's nothing much to listen to on the radio since I went, so. <laughs> <laughs> there are many, many thousands who'd wholeheartedly agree. <laughs>